All right, we're a couple minutes early, but let, let's just go. Let's just go for it. Hello. How are you doing? Looks like everything's running properly. That's always the big concern. I always like start it and then I pull up the stream to make sure everything is like working right. <laughs> Especially on this computer. This computer I have jerry rigged and I can't even get it. I, I'm watching it not on the account that I'm streaming from. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, I have a, a slight change of plans for today because I do have a cold. <laughs> So, uh, I was planning on pouring resin today. I don't know that I'm actually going to pour resin today just because I don't want to wear a respirator for like an hour while I have a head cold. Um, but I am going to set everything up so that I can pour resin in the next couple of days when I'm feeling better. Hopefully. Hopefully I'm, I'm, I start to feel better at some point here. But, but at the very least, we can get things set up. We can get some stuff put together. Um, I did grab like... Um, there are two, there, I have a fair number of different sets of dice oh thank you uh that we can get all of the materials put together for and that sort of thing um i have like we can, we're gonna make some liquid cores i am gonna get all of the colors pulled out and all of the um pigments and and inclusions and stuff for these pulled out and then um let's see uh i want to get some uh, plants put into some molds for some keychains. We'll decide on some shapes for those keychains too. And then since I didn't think we we're gonna get around to pouring resin, I did pull out some things that I need to I need to seal the lids on with some UV resin. So we can do that and chat for a little bit depending on depending on how long things go and how I'm feeling. Oh yeah, I use a tumbler for, for all of my dice. I'm terrible at hand uh, polishing. So I hand sand and then I throw them in a tumbler. I have a little bit of a cold, so we're probably not going to be pouring resin. Uh, I'm going to set up for resin, but I don't think I'm going to pour it today because I, I was just I was just explaining that I'm like I don't really want to wear a respirator while I'm all stuffed up. That doesn't sound fun for an hour or whatever. Um, but yeah, I use I use a tumbler for all of my dice. It makes them super shiny. I've got a bunch of things in there at the moment. Um, let's see, what should we do first? Should we do um, should we do liquid cores first, or should we put do putting plants into molds first? Um, I use a hardwood media. I also tried um, like the ceramic spheres, but I don't feel like it gets as good of a shine, personally. Um, so I've I've I went back to the the hardwood media, the little cubes. Um, but also I tend to leave think my stuff in the tumbler for a lot longer than other people. So. Uh, Resin cones, interesting. How, so that, it must be like a slightly softer resin than the resin that's going in. It's, no, it is not quiet. I have mine in this room, it's off right now, but this is in the basement, like, and I can hear it from my bedroom upstairs. <laughs> it is not quiet, but luckily I live in a house and not an apartment, so that makes it a lot uh, more convenient. If I was in an apartment, I don't know how well a, a, a tumbler would work for me with neighbors and all that. It's warm. I just made myself some more tea, but it's still quite hot. Um, but yeah, let's see. Should we do... It can move rust? I mean... Interesting. Not sure why your dice are rusty, but uh, <laughs> that's what you need. What was I saying? Oh, liquid cores or plants. Um... Sorry, I'm working on both spring, uh, streamer brain and slight sick brain just because of a cold. But should we start with uh, some liquid cores? I want to get a couple of liquid cores made. Um, I mean, we could make some more too. But I am slowly but surely working on... Oh, yeah, I, I use plastic polish. Um, I'm using Meguiar's Plastex. Um, I can grab the bottle and show you if you want. It's just right over here. Here, I'll just grab the hardwood, too. Ugh. So, we're taking a slight detour. So, hardwood cubes, they're not cheap. Uh, I'll put that out there, but also they, they last for a while. Hardwood cubes, that's 
what I use, and then oops, throw those back in here with ugh, plastic polish. There's a plastic polish that I use, and it works quite well. It gets things nice and shiny, but also I do leave my stuff. I do leave my dice in the tumbler for a lot longer than other people tend to. I think. Um, but yeah, I throw those in after doing 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 grit sandpaper on the on the surfaces of the dice that... Yep, I definitely do more than that. I do a lot more than that. Um, Alright, let's set up... Um, I think most people are happy with the one to three days. I tend to leave mine for about two weeks. Just for a frame of reference there. So this, is, this is some glycerin. I have no idea how old this glycerin is. Look at the bottle. It looks like an old... Like a, I am very, like... Uh, I'm very particular, I guess, with the shine. I wait until there's, like, zero micro scratches. Which is... I, I'm probably the only one that would notice the, the slight scratches. So uh, it's it's that's definitely a me thing and not a not a it's necessary thing. But dang, do I get some shiny dice out of it? A little bit of that. So that's about half glycerin, and half water, and then a little tiny bit of um, uh, isopropyl alcohol. Mix that up. So I wanted to make some um, cores for some, a couple of D20s, a couple of D8s, and then, I mean, we could do some more. I am slowly, slowly, slowly but surely making all the dice for advent calendars to send out in November. So I want to get those done so that I can sand and polish them in October and get them shipped out in November. Um, so I was going to do... Let's see, I have my notes here. I was gonna do a D20. So I have, I have all of my different cores labeled. So this one, that one says 20, that's my D20s. I was gonna do a D20 with a green liquid core and red and gold thread. So we'll do a green liquid core in there. And then I wanted to do a D8 liquid core with some of my new flakes because they're so pretty. Let's see, uh, might be easier to show you with my paint chips here. We gotta decide, we gotta decide uh, which, which one to do. Where do you get your glycerin? Because 75 water, 50%. Um, I think my grandma's basement, I, I didn't buy this. <laughs> I think I think I literally got it in like a box of craft supplies from my grandma. Um, that's why I'm like, um. <laughs> every once in a while, someone's just like, "Where do you where do you get that supply?" And I'm like, "From my grandma, because she wasn't using it anymore." Ooh, we could use that though too. So, I got these new flakes recently. It might not. Yeah, oh good, you can see them on camera. You can see the pretty colors. Um, there's more than just these three, but I got these recently, and I just want to use them in everything. So I was like, well, I could do a liquid core with some of those. I did do a D20 recently, actually. Let me grab it. Uh, I literally pulled this out. What is today? Today's Sunday. When did I pour stuff? Thursday? Friday? I don't know. Bring no worky. But I went and made a, I did make a D20 liquid core with these. Let me shake it up so you can see. And so now I want to do um, a D8 with some of the flakes. But I could also do these flakes instead, which kind of go between blue and green, but they're darker. Cause so this is like blue and green, right? But it's this kind of translucent, and this one's more dark and opaque. Um, they're so pretty. They're so pretty. I finally, I finally uh, purchased them. They're the um, what are they called? 
I think they're like chunky chameleon flakes from Let's Resin. Um, I finally got them after like thirsting over them for like a week and telling my brother about them repeatedly. He's like, you've been talking about this for a week. Just buy them. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Didn't take much convincing. Um, ooh, this one could be pretty too though. Yeah. But I could do, I could do one of the darker ones. Cause I do have these as well. These are also Let's Resin one. They are, they're also Chameleon Flakes. Um, I think the other ones are like ultra chunky or something. I'd have to look. Um, but I just got them on Amazon from Let's Resin. Um, and there's no sparkling and pretty. There's another one. Where did they all go? Oh, they're all at the bottom, of course. Uh, and if you are new here, these are my little, I call them my paint chips. Um, it's pretty much just like little test chips for all of the different uh, colors, colorants that I have. Um, plus some, <laughs> there's things in here like, here's turmeric. Turmeric, turmeric, turmeric. Yeah, so there's all sorts of different things, things in here. Um, oh, I think I want to pull this one out. I think this one would be good for the D8 over here. Oh. Um, all right. So let's decide on which flake we want to use. This might be a little loud. Let me get all of these back in here. I mean, there's always the option for like doing something just like shimmery, sparkly too. But I think a flake would be fun. Let's see, I was thinking after the D8, I think maybe, maybe we'll do it with like a dark green. I tend to like to do like um, some sort of um, opaque part where the um, opening of the sphere that we put all of the flakes in is, or the sh shimmer in is. Um, this one I did black, but for the, um, for the uh, uh, D8, I'm thinking maybe like a dark green could be kind of cool. I could do like a, yeah, I could do like a dark green sort of uh, drippy drip. Um, the darker colors I think work better with these, so. Uh, we gotta decide. That one's pretty. What about like the lime? How did you do what? What? I did you do what? Maybe this one. I think this one, it has a lot of green in it. Kind of green and maybe some yellows and blues. It's technically lime blue, but it's got like a little bit of like yellow in there too. Kind of a goldy sort of color. So I think maybe that one with like a, a green, like a dark green. The one that I did in here, I don't know that it is, but it might be. That one also definitely looks very blue and green. Oh, how did I do it? This one? The liquid core one? Oh, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to make some more of them. So, uh, hang out. And you'll, you, can, you can see. Um, let's, do, let's do this lime, this one. We'll do this one. And then we'll do, I'll figure out what sort of color green we want after we make the cores. So we'll do that for our D8. Let me grab, that's this size right here. And then for the D20, I think I just wanted like a shimmery, shimmery green. Do I want green? Green, shimmery green. I don't know why I put all of my colors away. Uh... I got? What could I do? I don't have a ton of greens. I guess this is the most like green green that I have. Cause I've got like, all of them are like really pale. I have a dark green over there. Wait, I have a darker green over there. Do I really not have a little container of it? 
I guess I don't. Let me grab, I grab my, my big container of darker green. Although actually, wait, is that this one? No, that's teal. We have the bigger container of dark green. No, my water. We're good. We can always mix some uh, some colors too. Um, this was over with my soap stuff. That's you use mica as a soap colorant too. But okay, just like I need to coming back out. I apparently wasn't done figuring out colors. I think that okay, that's this one. So yeah, I think that'll be a good green. We could always add a little bit of some other green in there too if we want. A little bit of, you know, something a little bit lighter. I think I think the dark green will be good. I was going to put like gold and red tinsel, I think, around it. So I think that'll be fun. Alright. Let's make some liquid course. So we got that, and then ah, I'm drop, trying to drop things over here. And then this one was the lime blue. There's the lime blue. Is it all the way in the back? Lime blue. Here it is. Cool. Uh, let's see. Just found your channel a few days ago. You're just beginning your resin journey. Ooh, fun. It's, it's fun. Really appreciate seeing all the different techniques possible. Yeah! Dude, resin is like so much fun because the, the opportunities are like endless. You could do pretty much anything. Uh, 20 is going to be this. Flakes are going to be that. Um, that's definitely... I, resin's fun because you can just keep experimenting forever. <laughs> you can try... You can put pretty much anything you want in resin as long as it's... Uh, doesn't have water in it. Even if it has a little bit of water, you're some, usually okay. Like you can do like acrylic paint a little bit, but it's fun because it's fun to just try things. I try to treat like pretty much everything I make as an experiment. And that way I'm not disappointed if it turns out terrible too. Uh, that's uh, that's how I deal with that. Uh, <laughs> Cause I definitely make some ugly stuff too. I really need to get another video done. I'm in the middle of editing one. I've just, so if you guys are wondering why I haven't posted a video in like three weeks, <laughs> uh, I started editing one video, decided that I was just not motivated to finish it. Um, started editing a different video. I was printing for a while. Yeah! I've been I've been having a lot of fun printing things out to uh, to put. Oh, I can show you. You guys want to see some inclusions? These are actually things that I printed and then painted. And these will be these will be in a uh, these will be in a video coming up too. Uh, this is like a but I've got just a little little gun, little size, and then this it's not painted at the bottom there, but that's because I'm gonna cut it down to size. So it didn't need to be cut and painted all the way down. Um, we're gonna get some of those figured out uh, today as well. Also, I don't think I included it in the video, but um, here's a little uh, behind the scenes, I suppose, on this side. Um, I I went and found uh, I went and found models online. I don't really have the skill. <laughs> I don't know enough about 3D modeling to model this sort of stuff myself, so I went on Thingiverse and went and found some models online for things. I really liked the shape of this scythe the best, but it was attached to something else. Um, it had like a base with it. I might actually have the base part here. Let me see. Um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Never mind. Wait, here it is. Yeah, here it is. There was more to it too, but it had like a whole like little mini base and things. Um, and I honestly wasn't quite sure how to uh, 
remove that in like Blender or whatever, so I just printed it as, printed it as is and then cut it off. Um, yeah, I, I did not do a great job of cutting it off. I completely snapped off the little handle, uh, the, little, the little handle there. And then I ended up, uh, when I was trying to kind of trim things down a little bit, I completely lost the bottom half of the scythe. Um, sorry, I, like, I got a weird blister on my finger. I'll, ex I'll explain that story in a minute. But um, So the little, the little tiny handle here I glued back on with some like um, Gorilla Glue. And then this handle part is actually made out of epoxy sculpt. Not epoxy, epoxy. It's A P. O X I E sculpt. It's a two-part um, modeling uh, clay. Uh, so, <laughs> so this is. I don't think I actually um, put that part in the video. I didn't. I didn't show my shame of completely snapping off and losing the uh, the bottom part of that handle, and then having to sculpt a new one. But uh, yep, that happened. Um, pay, pay no mind. You guys heard nothing. Ah, my scissors. All right, let's get this stuff put together. More golden green. Um, oh yeah, so I have a blister. That I just I, I keep getting reminded of it. It's um, it was like a blister blister yesterday, and now it's all weird. Where like whenever I move my finger, like the skin feels like it's pulling all weird. But I have a blister like right from like here to here. Um. And the way that I got that was by making keychains. I made probably about 20 of this sort of like um, things in like this sort of mold. And we're gonna we're gonna get some more of these up today too. So I had about probably about 20 uh, things in molds like this, different shapes and stuff. Um, and the way I get things out of these is, you know, you have like something in there. And it ends up with a seal as you're pulling it. So I go like this and I push on this and I wiggle it around a whole bunch to try and get the, the piece out. And I did that about 20 times with my holding it like this every time. And when I was done, I had a huge blister right here. I, uh, video by Once and Six Side about digital kit bashing for stuff like that. Shows super easy techniques for removing stuff like that digitally. Oh, okay. Uh, once and six sides. Let me write it down. Let me write it down. I must say that is the nice thing about doing a stream where I'm not like pouring resin, pouring resin, is I can actually um, write things down because uh, I'm not covered, absolutely covered in resin. About 3D modeling. Once in a once in a six side. Ah, I will fix that. Cool. All right, I'll check it out. Um, let's start putting some of this in here. Uh, I was oh I was talking about though with videos. So why I have not posted a video and I probably won't have a video posted. Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's going everywhere but inside of the thing. The flakes are so big. It doesn't take very many, though, I don't think. Um, my mini factory and loot studio and artisan make amazing models for D&D stuff. Okay. All right. Ugh, let me write it down. Uh, let's see. My mini factory. Uh, loot studio. And artisan loot studio and wait, is it just called art loot studio and artisan or or is it just called artisan? Cult three D. I'm not sure. So we have my mini factory, loot studio, and then I'm not not sure what the other one you were saying. Artisan guild. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, Got that written down now too. So 
type of thing that lives here. Okay, okay. Um, anyways, so anyways, yeah, I started editing one video, decided that I was not motivated at all to finish that video. Maybe I will at some point. It was, um, it was a vlog from a convention, but the convention happened, like, so long ago. I was just like, what is the, what's the point? Oh, no! I just breathed out too hard and all the stuff on the table just went everywhere. But I think that'll probably be enough with the little flakies. I'll show you. It's not, it's not like a lot in there, but I don't think it'll take a lot. Not very much. We'll add liquid, and if there's not enough, we can add some more stuff in there. We get a little bit of just like sparkle too. Should we add just a little tiny bit of like sp sparkle? Sparkle? And just like some, some clear shimmer. We'll add a little bit of just clear shimmer. That'll help fill in some of the space too. Just a little tiny bit. I don't need that. I don't need very much at all. Um, so, started editing a new, a new one. Okay, we've got those. Do green in these. Um, and then I, um, I have been swamped with commissions. I have a waiting list at the moment of, like, three different people. And I need to actually start emailing some of them. Um, so I'm finally starting to, is there a little crack in this one? Let's not use this one. This one has a crack in it. It just has an ever so faint crack. But no, I've been I've been absolutely swamped with uh, with commissions, so I've been trying to focus on that because I'm I've just been kind of behind on them. Um, I have things actually, you know, polishing now, so that makes me feel a little bit better about it. But uh, between uh, work and everything, it's just like, oh my gosh. I have zero free time. I've tried adding both oil and water. Well, I guess I have. That might be my next commission video that I end up making. Do you want to see it? I can probably grab one. I think I have one in the tumbler right now. Um, and it actually, it didn't behave quite like I expected it to. I will say that. Let me... I think I have one in the tumbler. Let me grab it. You guys are getting a sneak peek of a different commission this way. You guys are getting a sneak peek of another commission. Um, yeah, it did not really behave like I expected it to, so it does def definitely, so I did red, water, and clear oil. Um, and you can see it in there, and it stays divided. You can see how there's like two separate pieces. The thing is, it really doesn't like, even if you flip it and stuff, it doesn't really move much. It really doesn't like move much like you could still it's really It pretty much stays to its side, but it's still like kind of jiggly But if I shake yeah, if I shake it up I end up with like I can end up with um, Little little like beads of water and oil, but Yeah, yeah let's see let's see if I can get it so you can see kind of like the little Little beads in there. It's hard to see. Oof. Uh, I will say it is easier to see in person. Yeah. Yeah, because here, let me. Hmm. I'm just at a terrible angle. I'm going to come sit on my table. There we go. Now I can actually see if I can get it. So you guys can see things move in there. I 
It's so shaky because I'm trying to hold it still while also moving it. But yeah, it's definitely a cool, cool look to it. Um, I'm going to have to like mess around with it, the idea, a little bit more. Because um, it's definitely a cool idea. I idea. Uh, let's see. You're thinking a UV blank for a dye, one that's hollow you can fill with mica and oil. Wait, what do you, you mean like, uh, so just instead of the glass? Is that what you're saying? I know someone who has something like that in the works, actually. <coughs> I won't talk about it too much because I don't know, I know they're still in kind of like the testing phase, but I know someone who's trying to um, basically get it so that they can make some resin spheres for blanks, which would be very convenient. Okay, let's fill these up. This is one of our D20s with the green. Hmm, do I need to add more green? Is that enough green? If I need to add more green, we'll see. I think I'm going to want to add some more green. I feel like that's not, it's not dark enough. So let's add a little bit more green in there. I'll mix this one up too, see how it's looking. Or I could add some like, hmm. Like I don't have to add necessarily the same green. Should I add more of the same green or should I add something else? I could add some glitter. I could add some, oh, well, we can do green glitter. Sometimes that like floats strangely though. We could do like a, a glitter or a flake gold. Could add gold. Like a gold glitter. If I just add gold mica, it's going to kind of even out between the green and the gold. But I could do like gold glitter. Oh, I could even do, actually. I'm always wary of doing like um, metal. But I wonder if these are pretty rust resistant. What do you, th I don't know. What do you think? Gold glitter? Cause like, if they be okay, I have like a ton of like little gold metal spheres. And I mean, they'd be free to move around in there so that's not gonna affect weighting or anything. It's not like they're gonna be all to one side. Anybody have any ideas? Does anybody have any, um, Thoughts on whether that would rust or not? I'm not sure. Yeah, it is one of those things where it could be a cool test, but also it would be a, a very long test. Um, so I don't know that I'd want to send them out, you know, to, uh, to people if I'm not sure that it's going to stay nice. Do these at the very least. Oh, this does remind me that I need to pull out my. Whoop. Too much. Too much. Too much liquid. There we go. Um, but yeah, I need to pull out my UV resin. We can try my new little light. I got a new light that's a little handheld thingy instead of the uh, nail light thing. We could try it out. Um, what is this one doing? I think those are both looking pretty good. I'm trying to fill it up so it's pretty much all the way to the top. It's still a little bit concave so that I don't end up with uh, water everywhere when I add the resin on top. Um, so, 
So the way I'm doing this, I'm adding the resin kind of around in like a circular pattern, kind of working my way inwards. I don't, I don't add it just like in directly in the middle um, because I don't want to um, just, just have it sink in and displace all of that water I want it to kind of fill in. Um, the oil and water card don't really make this could be a cool opportunity for like a duality dye. Two different colors in the core and then the dye is poured twice. Once with each color, oh, so it's like opposite. Oh, like a sharp line between the two colors. They do move around some, so I, you can't really necessarily, like, uh, can make the dice look like a corrosive kind of thing. Rust could work if it happens. True. So maybe I'll do that. I'll maybe I'll save that experiment for a different a different set of dice uh, down the line, or a different D twenty or something down the line. Um. Yeah, hmm. that could be cool though. I like the idea. I haven't really done that much with liquid cores, where I, you know, do two separate pours. Because I've done that with dice. I've done sets of dice where I do multiple pours. Um, I actually one of the sets that we're gonna set up for today. We're gonna do our Patreon D twenties, uh, and I think I'm gonna do two separate pours for those. Um, oh wait, I just had an idea. So I did a poll on, this is the ones for August. Um, this is going to be the D20s for August. Um, I did a poll on Patreon saying, hey, what color should August's D20s be? I can tell that there's a hole there that I need to fill in. Um, and there was a tie between, there's a three-way tie. I think only three people voted. Actually, there was four-way tie, but um, there was a tie between black, white, and, and gray. That was one option. Um, metallics and rainbow. So uh, I decided I'm going to do all three. Swirl core and a swirl dice. Um... So I need to get something figured out that is, you know, going to fit that. I have kind of an idea, but now I'm having more ideas. <laughs> That's always the thing. Or, you know, because originally I was just going to do one half one thing, one half another thing. But I could do, like, a liquid core that has is, like, rainbow. And then it has, like, silver and white around it or something. I could do, I could do a core that's just full of, like, rainbow glitter. <laughs> That is an option that is available. I think I'm gonna go with my original idea, just cause I don't, I'm not sure I've ever done one of the Patreon dice as like a half and half sort of thing. So I think that'd be fun. Maybe we'll save the uh, the liquid core idea idea for a, another uh, another uh, month. Also, if you're confused what I mean by Patreon D20s, on my Patreon, one of the tiers you get a, a D20 every month. So we're making it's you get them a little bit after the fact because I make them after the month because I want to see how many people I need to make them for, um, and then I need to actually make them and sand them and polish them and stuff. But yes, the, I, you get it for all the months that you are joined at that tier. Okay, this one's looking pretty good. I'm just um, I'm just kind of wiping off the uh, the surface of where I have it done with, uh, with my finger just to see if there's any liquid. See if there's, yeah, there's some liquid there. Anywhere that I find uh, some water, I, I'm going to go back in and cover it up with some more UV resin and try and kind of blend that in. Um, and seal anything in because we don't want that water getting out. All right, but let's see, green. Um, the green, I think I was going to do with, I can't remember if I was going to do tinsel or thread, but like red and gold, maybe red thread and gold tinsel. That could be pretty. I think red red thread and gold tinsel around it. Um, so I think maybe I'll just stick with the green. I could add some green glitter, maybe slightly darker green glitter. I don't know if that's going to feel like 
tack. I so part I don't use a lot of glitter, guys. Um well oh, I have cat hair in my mouth. It gets everywhere. It has moved from just being in my resin to being in my mouth. Yeah. Um don't know if I got it or not. Um, part of the reason I don't use a lot of glitter is just like, you know, I've seen it used to great effect, but I always feel like it feels kind of tacky when I use it. I don't know why necessarily, because it's probably fine, but I, I maybe it's just, I don't know what it is. Maybe, I don't know what it is. True, I do have green leaf. Could do, could do that. Um, I think this stuff would be fine. I think I've seen people use the, like, leafing stuff in the course before, and it's looked fine. So maybe we could do some of that. I think that might be pretty. I like that idea. I do also have gold. Could do gold. But I'm going to have the gold around it and the red around it, so let's just do some of the green. I like that idea. Um, let's, let me get these cores um, completely sealed first, though, the little ones for the D8s. I'm just I'm going to add a little bit more. I usually end up going back a couple of times when I'm doing liquid cores and adding a little bit more just to make sure that it's definitely sealed because they are kind of finicky. But yeah, I like the idea of the... Um, the green leafing. Ooh. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what I'm I'm uh, covering right now. I'm, I'm getting the. Um, right, let me take this one off. I think this one's all sealed, so I can shake it up and we can see how it looks. There we go. Here's the little ones. One of them, anyways. I'm just trying to make sure that they're actually uh, actually all sealed at the moment. And then I'm going to move on to the green ones. We'll add the uh, add the uh, the foil and then seal those up as well. Add a little bit more liquid too. They're not full all the way. <laughs> the green ones at the moment are just, they're not full all the way. I filled them enough up enough to uh, kind of shake them up a little bit and see if the green was looking good. Okay, I think this one's actually okay. Here's our other... Here's our other one for the D8. Same dealio. Uh, I do need to figure out what uh, we want to do with that. Oh, I could just do like a, what if I just made the whole dye like a green color? All of it like a translucent green. I could make it like darker at the end where the hole is, but honestly just like a solid like green color could be really pretty around this. Yay! I do. These flakes are so pretty. The flakes are so pretty. Um, all right, let's add a little bit of green foil and see how it looks. I like the idea of green foil. If it actually gets in there, I do think this will probably break apart a little bit. The foil will. Oop, dude, you're supposed to actually go in there, not just stick to the sides. You're supposed to go in. In, 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 in. All right, you can stick to the sides. That's fine. It's sticking to the sides with the from the liquid. So, like, once I add a little bit more liquid, it should be fine. Right. I might I might want to add a little bit more of the green um, mica as well. I just feel like it's not quite dark enough or pigmented enough. Um, let's see. Did I do a lot of resining before I had a pressure pot? Um, I did some. Uh, I did some for sure. I, I have some stuff under the table I can show you. Um, I did a little bit of resin stuff before I started doing dice making. Mostly just, like, some little bits of jewelry and things, because, um, I was making soap. Um, before I did resin, I did soap. Uh, and I did, like, one craft bazaar a year type thing 
um, had a completely different business name, which was super generic and boring. And I literally just had it set up because I liked making soap and I had way too much soap. Um, I think that the, if you want to sell things, you're gonna want a pressure pot. If you wanna sell your dice, absolutely. Um, I think that it's gonna make your dice look a lot better, but if you're just starting out and you just wanna mess around with some resin, it's not necessary. Um, if you're just doing it for, for fun. Okay, which one did I add more to? I don't, wait, which one did I add more to? Did I add more to both of them? I I was distracted. I blinked on which one I added more of the green to. Oh well, that's fine. Stop floating. Wait a second, it's all floating. Let me see if I can get it down in there a bit. Yeah, okay, I like the foil. I like the foil. The foil was a good call. Um, I will get the them sealed and then I'll show you. It'll be kind of hard hard to hold up to the uh, hold up to the camera. Let me get the um, let me get these sealed, and then I, I will show you. Um, you in the just for fun category? Then eh, who cares? If you're just making them for fun, then like you can do whatever you want. You can you can just have molds and resin and make stuff. Why is I adding more of this? I don't remember. Just because I wanted to? Probably just because I wanted to. And I was distracted. And I saw pretty green shinies. Look at these one. To be fair, I started selling dice by accident. It was not... <laughs> this was not on purpose. Um, I did not expect to ever be selling dice. And then I, it just kind of happened. And I was like, well, this is what, this is what I'm doing now. Uh, and I'm I enjoy it a lot, but yes. Um, let me show you. I'll show I'll show you the difference between uh, with and without a pressure pot. I will show you with the I have some examples from super cheap molds, um, like the super cheap like wish molds. Uh, uh, resin. Here it is. What's the story behind that? Um, so I almost didn't even get masters made because um, they were expensive and I was like, I'm not going to sell these, but I did. Um, I had an Etsy shop because I made soap. Um, I never really sold much on that Etsy shop. I just had it there because, you know, I did my one bazaar a year. So every once in a while someone local would be like, where can I get more soap? And I'd be like, I have an online store. I can ship it to you or whatever. Um, so I had, I had an Etsy shop. And then I started making dice, and I was like, well, I might as well put some of these sets up in my Etsy shop. No no harm, no foul. Um, I, probably, I probably started selling dice uh, way earlier than I should have. Um, but people seemed happy with them, so that's fine. I put up a listing for five sets of Galaxy dice and five sets of... Um, amethyst dice in my Etsy shop and my plan was if anyone orders these I will make them and then ship them out that was kind of the the thought there I didn't actually have them made I had made one set of each and then I was like well if people want them I'll make more um, and I sold all five sets of the galaxy dice in two weeks I think I think it was, it was either one week or two weeks I sold like all five sets of the galaxy dice and like two of the fake amethyst faux amethyst ones and I, it was just one of those things where I'm like, well, I guess this is what I'm doing now. This was this was literally just my uh, my my COVID quarantine hobby. One of them. One of my COVID quarantine hobbies was uh, oh, bu bazaar, um, place where you sell things. It's fairly common where I'm at, at least, to have like Christmas or winter um, bazaars. You know, everyone has like their little booths and stuff. Mostly with uh, handmade crafts and things. Um. That's pretty pretty common here. I need to finish unburying all my soap stuff. I think I finally have everything I need to um, make the soap that I owe my friend from last Christmas. 
I gave her an IOU last Christmas for some soap and I still haven't gotten around to making it. We went and picked out scents and I have plans. Um, and extra bars will probably go in my shop. That. Anyways, things have just kind of snowballed from there. Um, let's see, I started selling dice on Etsy. I then started live streaming on Twitch, uh, making dice. Um, because I found out that there was people that did arts and crafts on Twitch. That was fun. Um, also, that was just a fun way during quarantine to actually, like, interact with people. <laughs> That's That was part of the reason I started streaming on Twitch. I'm just like, human contact, please. I want to talk with people. Anyways, I, I enjoy streaming a lot. Um, and then, uh, a little bit more than a year ago, I decided I wanted to try doing some edited content, too. So I switched from Twitch over to YouTube. Which, honestly, I'm happy about, because I... I don't even enjoy watching things on... I, to be fair, I've never been a big live stream like person, like, watching live streams. Um, I enjoy, you know, have, like, having a live stream more than watching them. Um, just because I like being able to pause things. I understand the appeal, but at the same time, I, my, I, I like being able to rewind and be like, what do they say? Um... But all, but yeah, I, just the way that the ads are set up on Twitch now and stuff, I can't I I can't deal with it watching things live on there. I don't know. I find it very frustrating. Live streams on YouTube, I'm more likely to watch. I'm more likely to watch a live stream on YouTube. They're just harder to find. Pros and cons. Pros and cons. Anyways, that pretty much leads us to where we are now. Oh, I guess I moved. You the same? Yeah. I guess I moved off of. Uh, Etsy to to my own store. E Etsy also kind of Etsy, Etsy, Etsy. I think it was a good place for me to start, but uh, I'm glad I'm not there anymore. Even if I don't have as many sales, they just did enough things to kind of piss me off. Then I'm like, eh. Oh, with with Etsy or with uh, or with uh, Twitch. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. Let that sit for a second. I'm gonna see if there's any like liquid anywhere. This one is looking surprisingly okay. Unfortunately, there's a big glob of uh, resin there. Have a weird spot for that, but that's okay. But it's been, it's been, I don't know, it's, it's all been fun. I'd love to make it my full-time gig. <laughs> I had it as my full-time gig for, for a while, um, during quarantine. Well, sort of. I was doing, like, some, um, man, you guys want my whole, uh, whole life story here? I, um, I had a full-time job. I was, had a full-time job, was going to school part-time. I was taking, like, one class at a time towards my bachelor's, and then um, I quit my full-time job so that I could finish my bachelor's, partially because I was burnt out from working full-time for five years while going to school part-time and having zero free time, um, and partially just because I couldn't get things to line up, and I was, I just wanted to be done with my degree. And then I graduated in May of 2020. Um... Yes, I would recommend it to a beginner with some caveats. Um, I will say that having the built-in audience of Etsy is uh, very nice. Like, it's nice not having to try and drive traffic to your own site. It's nice having them driving traffic for you. Um, you don't have to, you know, try and figure out all of the social media stuff and all of that sort of thing. 
Um, okay, let's see how these look, by the way. Very nice for that. Um, if you don't have very many items that you're selling, it's probably going to be cheap, cheaper for you to um, pay the fee per item that Etsy has as opposed to the flat rate that say like Shopify, which is what I use has, you know, I pay a certain amount and for a year of the service, um, instead of paying per item that I list. So I can list as many items as I want for a flat rate, whereas Etsy is going to hit you with fees for every item that you post pretty much. Hmm, can't see the foil as much, but honestly, I feel I'm okay it's kind of with that. It's like, you see little bits of it just kind of peeking through. Yeah. Some of it kind of stuck to the bottom, but that's okay. Okay, cool. I like that. Let me just make sure that there's not um, any spots here. Let me do this side a little bit. Um, so yeah, good for driving traffic. Good if you don't have as many items because it's probably going to be cheaper for you. Um, they do have a lot of random fees. Um, so even if, though it's not cheaper, it might be a little bit more confusing. It's one of the pros, I was, um, I was in a Discord talking about this the other day. Um, they do all of the like taxes and stuff for you. So you don't have to try and figure out sales tax or anything. They literally just give you like, you know, a quarterly, here's the information you need to give to the state or your state or country or whatever for taxes. Um, you don't have to try and figure that out. Um, shipping's pretty easy. Um, I will say it was, it's pretty easy to use. The things that it did to piss me off though were, um, once you start making over a certain amount, um, well, you can opt out of this below a certain amount, but they still, they'll still hit you with it. But, um, once you start making over a certain amount, you can't opt out of it. They w they ran ads with my products. So they ran Etsy ads with my products and I couldn't opt out of it and then they charged me for it. Um, that was one of the things that they did to piss me off was running their ads with my stuff and then charging me for it. Um, and then, hello, how are your hats? Uh, and then the other thing that, that, that was the one that, that really got me. Um, and then it was like kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. I'm talking about Etsy and, and pros and cons and why I left. Um, uh, they in introduced the Star Seller program, which I was eligible for. I just want to put that out there. I was eligible for it. Um, you had to, I think, respond to messages within 24 hours, have um, a certain um, like percentage of five star ratings and, uh, ship things on time. Um, you know, some of those sort of things. Oh, your liquid colors, your resin loves to sink in the liquid. Oh wait, I think someone mentioned this in my discord. I can't remember what it was. Did they just not include the, the isopropyl alcohol? Um, I have had that issue a little bit. Um, Especially if I try to add the resin to a bunch of them at, at before, you know, hitting them with the with the lasers. Um, I'll have it sometimes sink a little bit, but I don't. I haven't had it sink a ton. I feel like someone else in my Discord was talking about this at one point. Um, yeah, if you're not part of my Discord, you might. It should be in the description. You might ask over there. Cause I think someone had a solution for it, but I don't remember what it was. Um, but I do also, I was saying before, I try to add the resin kind of in like a circular motion starting on the outside and working my way in. So, cause if I add it directly in the middle, it's just going to sink in there. But if I add it on the sides, it's hopefully going to fill in from the sides. And then if I need to add a little bit um, more then maybe, you know, I can add some more in the, in the middle after I've already cured that. Oh, okay. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It could just be different UV resins. Uh, could be diff slightly different balance of things in it. I'm not sure. You made a jellyfish one of them? That's cool. That sounds super cool. Let me real quick. Um, whoops. Oh, I was talking about the Star Seller program, though, um, on, on Etsy. 
So, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I was eligible for it, but uh, the reason that it, it pissed me off was because um, the way I looked at it, it wa was there to favor resellers and not individual artists. Um, it was, yeah, so uh, because... Um, the requirements that they had would favor people who had like a team of people working for them as opposed to independent artists where it's just a one-man show type thing. Um, cool, I've got those made. I'm going to set this off to the side, I think. Get it out of the way. I think that's all the liquid cores that we need to make. Um, let me set this one. If you're if you've just gotten here, we're making some a couple of cores with some new flakes that I got. Kind of like this one, but I think we're gonna do it with green. Um, cool. We've got the cores made there. Um, let's start working. I think on these uh, keychains. I want to make about ten. I think. Um, or make some. Uh, I've got I've got blistering on my hands and it's sticky. I don't like it. I don't like how sticky it is. Um. But yeah. Anyways, it just it felt like it was there to favor resellers and people who were. Um, oh yes. Thank you for the reminding me. Uh, let me see what I got here. Let me see what I got. All right, let me pull out some things with old molds. So I'm pretty sure that was done without pot. Okay, this is I think a better example. And so is this. Okay, these are these are better examples of things. Done without pressure pot. Okay. So things done without a pressure pot. These are I'm mean, these are all from really old, very cheap molds that I got on like Amazon or whatever. Um, they look fine on this side, except you can see that there's like a corner missing um, because the pressure pot would have pulled all of the, kind of like squeezed down the air in that corner and made it fill in with resin probably. Um, and then also the side that's up where all of the air bubble, air bubbles traveled to while it was curing, definitely has a lot of, um, oh my gosh, is it gonna focus? Never likes to focus where I want it to focus. There we go. Definitely has a lot of little tiny air bubbles. Um, the little tiny air bubbles are definitely more apparent in clear resin too. Um, so let me show you this one that was done pre-pressure pot. If it'll if it'll focus. Oh my arms are getting tired. I'm just gonna come sit on my desk again. Oh, you get comfy listening. I'm in my I'm in my comfy sweats because I don't feel good. Okay, you can see see how it's kind of, it looks, uh, all those little tiny bubbles in there inside the die versus, say, uh, this one, which was done after I got a pressure pot, so, you know, same mold and everything, where you don't uh -huh. see, you don't see any of those little speck bubbles in there at all. So it definitely, I think, makes your, your dice look a lot more finished and polished. Um, yeah, because you can, again, cheap molds. That The D8 before they had all of those bubbles. This one was made after I got the pressure pot. Um, there's no no little, little pock marks or anything in there. Um, here's a big chunk of resin. That was made pre, pre uh, pressure pot. You can see all of the bubbles in there. That's what's making it cloudy. It's just air bubbles. 
These are some old pieces. This is before I ever started doing dice, I think. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely makes your stuff look more polished. Um, I still do some things outside of the pressure pot, um, obviously, just because they don't fit. I should do some stuff with some of these big molds. I still have these molds for that. Um, I, but yeah, I still, uh, I still do some things outside of the pressure pot. Um, for example, like the... Yeah, I mean, there is stuff you can do, I think, to get rid of some of that, the air bubbles there. The, those were some of my first ever dice attempts. I'm going to put that out there, so like, I definitely didn't have the technique down uh, very well. Um, you know, letting them sit for a minute before putting the lids on so that air can rise to the surface. Uh, not mixing air into it. I probably do that way too much. I probably mix some air into it. Um, I've heard of people warming up their resin a little bit before they mix it so that it's a little bit more liquidy. Um, you could also just get a resin that's a little bit more liquidy. I use a very thick resin. It's very honey consistency. Um, so there, there is still things you could do to probably mitigate some of the, the, the bubbles. Um, I mean, I have done, I have done pieces that have, you know, the, before that, that have air bubbles and then, fine. Yeah, I don't even use a vacuum chamber for mine. It seems to do all right. Um, as long as I let, let the resin sit before, for like a minute before I put the lids on. That blister's weird. It keeps feeling like the skin's the wrong size there. You just got here. I have a blister on my finger from un unmolding a ton of uh, keychains the other day. Um, speaking of keychains, let's work on those next. I have a bunch of molds here. Um, oh, also for people that got here in the middle of the stream, not at the beginning, um, I'm probably not going to pour resin today. I'm getting everything set up to pour resin, but I don't think I'm going to pour resin just because I've got a bit of a cold and I don't really want to wear the respirator while I'm all stuffed up and stuff. Also, if you've noticed me talking a little bit funny, it's because I have a cold. My nose is all stuffed up. Um, but let's uh, let's get things set up. I want to make about 10-ish, I think, um, keychains. I'll grab out a couple of the um, crystal-shaped ones. I'm going to make some... I have, um, at in-person events, I have just like little keychains for ev all of the D&D classes. So, you know, like bard, barbarian, cleric. Um, we're gonna make druid ones. And I have a design that I've made in the past. Oh, actually I have this right here. Wait, why don't I, why don't I use this one? I just, oh, cause it has a bubble in it, I see. Um, so it's, I literally have just been doing, this one's also not very shiny, but like this kind of plant, uh, Kind of like these small flowers here in clear resin and then it has you can kind of see a little bit of the sparkle there um it has like a a pinkish uh, either pink or yellow uh sparkle kind of simple but they turn pretty that one that one would, would be prettier if it was uh shinier um but let's figure out some shapes that we want to do i'm gonna grab a couple of crystal shaped ones that seems like a classic uh, this one's kind of a funky shape, like it looks square, but if you look inside, it kind of goes down to like a point. Let's try that one. Uh, we could do one of these, one of the diamond shaped ones. We'll do a circular one. I'm trying to get kind of a, a mix of things in here. For some of the other uh, designs, I have done them in like this kind of uh, mold. I don't think that's going to work very well for these, um, just because the, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm saying uh, a lot. I'm going to brain, I'm going to, I'm going to brain, I'm going to brain, I'm going to blame, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to blame being sick and not just me saying uh, a lot naturally, because I totally don't just say uh, a lot naturally. I've been editing, I've been editing video this morning. And I've been editing out all of the little, like, 
like clicks that I make and us and me repeating the same f me repeat me repeating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Rolling an intelligence check. I'm going to brain. What you don't know about me is that I am high intelligence, low wisdom. <laughs> you wouldn't think it, but. I just don't know how to brain today. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know that these, tri these triangle ones might be a little bit small. Might be kind of hard to get things in there. We have another round one. One, two. Three. Four. Ah. Uh, what should we do for our last one here? Wait, where's our twisty square? Let's do a twisty square. I like the twisty square. It's square, but it twists. <laughs> All right, we'll do those five. Uh, keychains. I'm gonna make some some keychains. I have. Um, I make. Um, D and D uh, class inspired keychains that I bring with me to in-person events, and I've got a bunch of in-person events coming up. Um, if you ever want to come see me, I'll, let's see, I'll be at uh, blah, 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 the Halloween Expo in Spokane, Washington in October. And then I will be at, uh, I'm be at Dyer Brook. We'll see how that goes. It's kind of a, it's a new thing. I don't know. I don't, it might be, it might be a complete flop. I don't know don't know it seems to be, I think this is the first year that they're doing it so it's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting one um, but that's gonna be in Portland Oregon I believe yeah Portland Oregon I think I feel like that one I will have I will have stories to bring back with me whether it goes well or whether it goes terribly it seems like that sort of uh, <laughs> that sort of thing we'll see we'll see um, hi how you doing I don't, I don't want to do this. Cause I, I, if I just do five, it's kind of loose, and I'm worried. Uh, I think it's okay. I think they'll they'll stay upright. That's the main thing is I'm staying upright. I'm just I don't want the rubber band to be so tight that it like squeezes in on them, but I don't want it so loose that they're gonna fall over. But I, it's loose, but I think it's gonna hold them upright. So that's the important thing. Um, although I need to put flowers in those first. What am I talking about? Let me grab flowers. Let's see here. Uh, where are these? these flowers in the past? I might need to start branching out though. I worry that I'm not going to have enough of those uh, continuing going forward. Hmm. I like the shape of those though. What do we got? What do we got? Do you have anything else that's kind of like small but long? I could do some of these. What's that stuff there? Let's let's try it out and see how it looks. Hmm. This could be pretty. Be some of this. I'm looking for something that has like a fair amount of texture, but is like long and it's that's small has some texture and is long enough to fit in this sort of shape, the longer drop pendant sort of shape. Um, I've been using um, this sort of stuff. So little tiny flowers. They're kind of on longer stalks, um, but I'm gonna run out of that at some point. So I need to start figuring out some other plants I can use. I'm thinking maybe like this kind of one, although I don't know if that, it's not quite as textury. Doesn't have as many flowers. Um, or maybe some of this kind of one. Again, not as textury or as many flowers but it does have some, some variation in it and it still has a little bit of height. Hmm. 
I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I could do something where I add some kind of like leafy bits and some flowers. Hmm. Uh, let me grab a little bit more of this. Grab another piece of this. This is this is the same as the like long spiky one. I'm gonna, I'll start out with the one that I'm used to, so I can kind of show you guys what I'm doing, and maybe you guys can help me figure out what I wanna what I wanna replace it with when I run out, when I inevitably run out of this stuff. So I've got these; they're a little bit longer. I've been breaking off a section. So like that, say, that might be too long actually, but breaking off a section like that. And then that goes into one of the molds. Let's do our twist, let's do our square square. This is a slightly bigger one and the square is a little bit bigger, so we'll do it in there. Literally just put that in and then we will be doing our resin with our little bit of shimmer over top. Okay, cool, that actually fits in there, great. Um, see if you can kind of see it through the, eh, they're old enough now, it's kind of hard to see through the molds, but if I had a light behind it, wait, does that work? Can you see, can you see through it? You can kind of see the, um, anyways, putting the plants in there. That's what we're doing. Um, I'm trying to. I need to figure out what I want to. What else? What other plants I want to use? Let's maybe try this. I don't know. Should we try this one? It's kind of a. It's definitely a different style of plant, I guess. But definitely still looks planty. It just doesn't have the same like fullness to it. You can kind of see in there. It just looks like a single like little stalk and then it goes up to this stuff. Definitely a different vibe. It's not as like full and fluffy as, as these flowers are. Hmm. Oh, let's see, what were we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't remember. We'll do a couple with those. Try it out. Let's try a couple with our other flowers that I grabbed too. This is just a whole mass of them. Let me grab a single one. So we'll try some with these flowers too. Again, not as full and fluffy as our other ones. That might be kind of long too. Let me make it a little bit shorter. Get in there. I'm trying to do this without like breaking any of them off too, because I do want them to look like, you know, the full plants. Mm. That's definitely not down in there very far. Okay. Find any. So the answer is no and yes, uh, sometimes. Um, no, I'm not playing in any games at the moment. I was kind of part of a group uh, and then things kind of, um, I'm not in Canada. Oh, uh, <laughs> I see. Um, no, I've pretty much only used the, the um, art and glow. Um, I might try a different one coming up here, we'll see, but that's kind of a special circumstance. Uh, is that in all the way? Okay, well, we'll try that. We'll try a couple of these new plants and see how we like them. But no, alas, I have not tried it. Um, but let's see, the uh, question about tabletop games. Um, it's funny, so one of the first sets of dice that I made, oh no, I broke it! It wasn't like the first, the first, but one of the like 
earlier sets of dice that I made was based on a character that I'd kind of, um, uh, I had put, designed kind of the character, I had the idea for the character, but I hadn't played the character yet. Um, and then it's funny because I actually, that was, when I first started making dice and putting them in my Etsy shop, when I had an Etsy shop, they, they usually sold. <laughs> Which, I mean, that sounds kind of odd, but I guess, or conceited, I don't know. But they, they usually sold. Most of the dice sets that I put in my shop sold at some point. Um, usually fairly quickly. When it, within a couple months, at least. And to be fair, my prices were also half of what they are now, but that's uh, slightly different story. Um, it, but I made a set of dice. I made them based on this character that I wanted to play. But I'm like, well, I'm not playing this character. I can make another set of these dice later. I'll just put them in my shop. One of the few sets of dice that did not sell, and I was like, that's okay. <laughs> These are gonna be mine. And then I actually went back recently and, and repolished them um, up to my current standards of polishing. Um, and they're all they're all pretty and shiny now. But um, yes, I have I have made some dice for characters. I have I don't keep a lot of my sets of dice. Um, I really don't. It's kind of funny because uh, my brother's actually the dice collector in the family. I'm I'm not as much. I enjoy making them. I don't collect them as much. I definitely have a lot more sets of dice now, but um, I actually I mean I have a lot of sets of dice now. Let's be real. Just between you know sets that I had before I started making them, um, sets that um, I kept. Usually the the dice that I've kept they've been um, sets where not all of the dice turned out. Or, um, you know, just kind of one or two of the dice kind of turned out, so I kept them. Or, um, you know, it was like, oh, this, it was a dump mold and I just really liked it, so it's just a single die. I'm like, that one's mine now. I actually have a container of dice that are unsanded, unpolished, that are like that, where I decided I want those. So they're, they're just sitting over there for me to sand and polish for myself at some point. Maybe I will empty it out at some point and, and put some of them into my miscellaneous raw dice, but they're there for now. Uh, but no, I don't keep a ton of sets for myself. Um, but I started playing in a group fairly recently, and I finally got to start playing that character, and then the group kind of, you know, dissolved a little bit, which, eh, it happens. I, um, you know, I understand why people like playing tabletop RPGs. Um, I think I like them for different reasons. Um, like, I, I, I do enjoy the, like, the actual game of it, but, um, I enjoy it more as an excuse to meet up with people and hang out, um, which I can, I can do without playing those games. Um... I, I would rather not play D and D than play it online, just because the whole reason that I, I like playing it is that I like hanging out with people uh, in person, and also I just can't focus on it online. I don't I don't know why I just cannot focus. I it, it just drives me mad trying to trying to play the games online. Like, I understand that people like playing it for the game, so they're, like, cool with it online. I just cannot focus on it. I, um... Oh, no, I have no problem talking about prices and, and business stuff. Um, I was not charging myself for my time. Like, um... There, there's so there's a, a couple of reasons. So when I first started making dice, I kind of picked a number that was I'm like, well, this is about what other people are charging. It looks like. Um, once I started getting more into it, um, I, I've slowly I've slowly raised my prices over time. Yes, exactly. I'm I'm exactly the same. Um, Trev Claridge. I'm sure I butchered your name. Um, yes, exactly. I, I, I do meet up with friends for board games like once a week, um, and some of the folks there are not interested in uh, 
tabletop RPGs. They'd rather play board games. So it's like, well, Trev, okay. Um, you know, they'd rather play board games. I'm, I'm fine with that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh. <clears throat> Why am I? Chest started hurting. Or just sitting at a weird angle. Um. But yes, let's see my price changing. I did it slowly over time. Um, some of it was because, uh, and I realized that I could not make enough items in a month to pay my bills. Um, that's probably still, this might still be true, might not be true actually now, now that I've raised my prices, but um, that, was, that was a realization I went to. That's part of the reason I went and got a part-time job too. It was because I realized, oh, there is actually no way for this to support me. Um, I can't make enough items for this to support me. Okay, cool. Those are all put together. I am going to have to figure out what plants I want to use. Let me put some of these away. Um, and then, uh, part of it was me realizing that I wasn't actually, I wasn't even paying myself for my time. So I, when I started out, um, a s pretty standard set of dice was 50 bucks. Um, this, this is what I was grabbing. But then if you think about it, uh, and I have, I have a video on my channel somewhere that's, that's called, this is, is it called, this is why handmade dice are so expensive? Or is that just the thumbnail? I can't remember. Either that's the thumbnail or the title, I don't remember. Um, and it's little, literally just me making a set of dice in real time. Um, and it's about a three hour video. So assuming that I'm making, say 20 bucks an hour, so a little bit above minimum wage, which is I think 15 here. Um, I, I am, that's more that like, I'm not making minimum wage. I like, well actually 15, I would be making, I'm not even making minimum 30. I'd be about making minimum wage if I just charged for my time. Um, which that doesn't seem quite right. Um, and then as I have, as I've gotten further into this, uh, Something, I guess that's not even taking into account materials and stuff, too. Um, as I've gotten further into this, let me put these away just a second. Um, and I think what really made me realize it mm, it, that video has done way better than I expected it to. I did not expect anyone to watch that video. It's kind of funny. Uh, Got a lot more views than I thought it was going to. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's part of the reason I'm debating raising my commission prices, honestly. I'm not, I'm probably not charging for my time on commissions. Um, they take a lot more time, but that's a different story. Something I realized, especially doing, um, well, also the person that these are for, are you here out of curiosity? Just uh, the, the the thing. Um, if you can't say that's fine too, I will I will email you later. Um, I realized when I was at a convention that I should be paid for my time there too. So that that this is uh, leads into kind of a different thing. Um, how am I? getting paid, say I'm at a convention for eight hours. Where is the money for me to be paid f to be at that convention coming from? If I'm only charging for my time making the items and the items are the only way that I'm making money for this business that I should need. Say, say I'm a separate person, say I hired someone else to go and sit at a convention for me. Um, not that I'm paying my brother, who I drag along with me to conventions, but say I hired someone else to go and sit at conventions for me, how would I pay them for their time if the only way that I'm making money is through the items that are being sold and uh, I've only, I'm only charging for the time it took to make those items? So I, I realized that I kind of had to take into account um, the cost of the business along with just the cost of making the items when selling the items because um, I, I, it, there's a lot of expenses that go into like the business itself 
and time and things that go into the business itself, um, and with no other way that the business is making money. Part of the reason I, I raised them, but m mostly it was just because I realized I was not actually charging, I was not making it worth my time. Um, part of the reason I'm debating raising my commission prices, and I would do it after, I would, I would, uh, if anyone is one of the people on my waiting list here, you would have the old prices. Just want to put that. I'm not going to retro, like, change it on you. But going forward, part of it is just because I have a waiting list. Um, but also I don't want to, like, I don't know if it's just a seasonal thing. I don't want to just be like, well, you know, I have seven people that want commissions now or whatever. Uh, and then I'll raise my, so I'll raise my prices and then later find out, oh, everyone just wanted commissions during this one month. Uh, and now no one's interested. Um, but at least on the complicated, the, the, the uh, more complex ones, so say the ones where I am making inclusions. Um, the handmaking inclusions, the, the time it takes to make those varies a lot, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But it could take anywhere, like one inclusion for a die could take anywhere from 15 minutes to six hours, we'll say. Probably not six hours, but if I'm 3D modeling something, printing it out, uh, and all that stuff, painting it, adding other things to it, that could take a long time. So, in, probably not six hours, probably two, maybe two usually at the most, anywhere from probably half an hour to two hours per inclusion. Um, and also, commissions just take a lot longer because there's a lot of uh, talking it requires. Commissions take a lot, uh, a big part of commissions is just communicating with people. A lot of time is spent sending emails. <laughs> okay, so we've got our things figured out for our keychains. Let me move these out of the way. I don't need the rest of these. <laughs> Um, and, and then also with commissions, you get two free reports, so there is some time there. Not everyone takes me up on that necessarily. Sometimes the first pour is like, yep, it's perfect. Um, but, you know, there is extra time there, too. You are getting that assurance with a commission that you're getting a report. Also, I do videos for all of them. <laughs> I've been doing videos for all of the commissions. So there's, I guess that's some added time, too, but I, I guess I haven't been charge people for the videos that's kind of just something I've been doing as a bonus it's kind of kind of on my end um, all right let's see here <sighs> what else do I need to get set up I should pull out things for the set that these are for um, the gun and scythe and stuff No, I haven't really had a problem. It's just acrylic paint, but I haven't I haven't had a problem with it really bleeding. Um, I could see it scratching off maybe if I you know rub it against something, but it hasn't really been hasn't really been an issue that I've noticed. And also, please feel free to interrupt. I'm just rambling until someone says something to me. <laughs> I like I like streaming because I like talking to people. So please feel free to interrupt my rambling. I'm just rambling to fill the, the dead air otherwise. Um, let's see here. Let me look at my notes. Gun is D8. First of all, let me make sure that this fits correctly. It would be a real shame if it didn't fit correctly. Oh, good, it does. Um, I did check that before, but I, you know, I just wanted to double check here. Make sure that this actually fits in the mold. We're good. Um, this, the notes say um, gray or white smoke with it. I'm thinking this color. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more blue, but it's kind of a gray ink that I have. Um, I could do that. If I did white, it's going to be a bit, it's going to be more opaque. Um, which I suppose could be fine. 
I just don't want to cover up the gun too much. I could do one of these. Which one is the... So I could do like a, a like a white. This one I think is not quite as as opaque. Um, mix it with a little bit of that gray, make it a little cloudy. But I'm I'm debating if I should just do a little bit of the gray with it. Either way, gun goes in the D8. I'll set both of these off to the side, and I can I will decide later when I actually pour resin. Um. I, I've, as I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times in the stream, but I know people keep popping in and stuff. Uh, probably not going to pour resin today, just because I have a cold. <laughs> I don't want to wear the respirator when I'm all stuffed up. That does not sound fun. Um, the D12 is going to have the size. Let me make, again, make sure that this fits in here correctly. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. This one might not fit quite right. So this one I had to remake the uh, the handle part um, out of clay. So this one I might need to cut down actually. It's sticking out. I'm wondering if there's a way for me to get this in here. Yeah, it's just a little bit big. Um, I'm going to cut this down here to get it the right size, and then I'm going to take it um, upstairs to uh, paint the end. How did I have this in here? Just like so, does that go to? Ah. Try not to break this because it is quite, you know, not really fragile, but okay, a little bit shorter still. I, I do want to keep the shape, so this is a fine balancing act of still making it look like a reasonable size without the handle being super short. And uh, okay, that's looking a little bit better, maybe. I'm thinking now that I might need to put it in this way because I can't seem to get it to rest quite right. I might put it in that way. Yeah, I can get it to rest right now when I put it in with the side part at the top. So I might actually want to flip this around. I was, hmm, part of the reason I was going to do this with the highest number at the top is because I plan to dab some ink on the blade part so that it looks like blood or whatever, and then put that into the die, kind of swirling it around so that it looks like the it's kind of swirling up to it. Um, and that would be easier if I have it upside down here. Okay, wait, I can get it to work, I think. No, why is why can I not get it to rest right when I put it in this way? Maybe put it in this way instead. I don't know why, because I'm you know it works fine when I put it in the other direction. Why can I not get it to, it to rest right when I put it in this way? Okay, let me see how I have it in here when I do this. So that's in a corner. Yep, understandable. That's in a corner, that's in a corner at an angle. And that kind of goes that way. Just trying to like kind of match the shape, I guess, here. So say this, that goes in this corner. How did I do that? How have I done this? What have I 
I done? What have I done? How did I get that to work? Up top. It's kind of like this, maybe? There we go. Okay. Okay, I see now. I was trying to figure out how to get the, uh, how to get it in there. I do kind of worry that it might be a little bit too... No, oh, actually, I think that'll be fine. Okay, that'll be fine. I just need to kind of follow the blade along. I don't want it to, like, jam into the side and then make it weird for sanding later, but I think we'll be okay. Um, but I do definitely want to go paint the end of that scythe, um, so it's not gray. This definitely looks a little bit funky at the moment. The end is gray where I chopped it. So we'll paint that brown, and then I think we'll be fine. That, and that one's going to have red. Uh, I should figure out the red, I suppose. I think I'm going to want to mix the red with, a, like, a little bit of some sort of like a, a green or a black to darken it up a little bit and make it a little bit more blood-like. I think most of my reds are very red red or kind of orangey red. Um, and that, once it's a little bit more spread out in the resin, it's not gonna look very deep and blood-like. I think I want it to be a little bit a little darker. I do like that cherry. I think this cherry is good with maybe like a hint, like a, a little tiny tint of either a green or a black. I mean like a tint, like a little tiny bit. Maybe like a little tiny bloop of the, of this green. Just to make it a little bit, not, not make it a little bit more muted. Dude, the description for this commission is, is complicated. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, D8 has a gun with smoke. Uh, D12 is going to have the scythe with uh, blood red kind of up around it. Um, D20 is going to have a staff with a gem on the end. Um, and then let's see, D... Oh, I should figure out the uh, colors for this D10 here, too. D10 is going to have some gold foil, uh, along with a red to, like, an orange. And again, I think I want to do kind of like that blood red where it's a little bit darker. So I might actually use the same, I might actually use the same color. I might do kind of like the red with a little bit of green to make it a little bit darker and more muted. Uh, and then I'm going to go all the way to, like, a lighter orange. But I think I want to do this color in the middle because it's actually really pretty. Let me see if I can find it in here. I'm going to dump this out again. Um, ooh, that's a nice red, though, too. One of those reds. Ooh, that might just, mm, just kind of nice red. Maybe I'll do that red, actually. Uh, that's this one. I'll do that red. A little tiny bit of green, make it darker. Uh, let me find the mum color. That's what this one is. This one's called mum. And it's kind of like a reddish, orangish. Here it is. It's pretty. Like, the light behind it, it definitely looks orange. Like, you can kind of see, like, it looks orangish with the light behind it. But then if there's, like, a bunch of it, like, all together, it looks more red. I really like this one. I, d I don't, it's just a pretty color. So we'll do darkish red to that to I think like a lighter maybe like a carrot sort of orange I did try doing this dye once already it just was not um it's over here we got it It didn't have enough contrast uh it all kind of ended up looking like it was all this it kind of ended up looking like it was all the same color um so we're gonna go from even darker red to lighter orange. Um, maybe I don't want to use this one in the middle. Maybe I want something with a little bit more. No, actually, I think that'll be fine. I don't think I'll use a ton of it. Should I do? Yeah, I think that one. I think that'll be good. Uh, we won't make it super dark, but I want this to be to be light, and this is gonna be darker than I think it is. It's gonna be more like that. Ooh, yeah, I think that'll be good. That seems like a good good combination there. So, mum, 
Cranberry and Everglade. Everglade? There it is. Yes. Uh, cranberry and Everglade. Mum and then Carrot. Oh, these are all new, some of the new uh, inks I got. I got uh, I got these inks recently. My grandma texted me. Um, she moved recently, so she was you know cleaning house and stuff. Um, but she texted me and she was just like, "Hey, do you use alcohol inks?" And I'm like, "Yes, I use alcohol inks. Why do you ask? <laughs> alcohol inks? Hmm." Um, I don't know why she got them necessarily. I don't know if it was for. She was doing a bunch of like stuff with her Cricut, a bunch of like different paper and vinyl stuff, so I don't know if she got it them for that at some point. Um, but, uh, I, I uh, yes. <laughs> I ended up with a bunch of alcohol, un unopened alcohol inks. I'm like, sweet! <laughs> Absolutely! Um, uh, and then the D, let's see, the D20's gonna have the staff in it, but before I do the staff, I need to do a layer of, um, kind of like white sand is what, white sparkling sand is the, the description I was given. Um, so I think we'll definitely do some of this sparkle. Dude, I've gotten, I've gotten so many craft supplies from like my, my grandma and my dad. It's, it's, uh, I'm very thankful. <laughs> this is, I have very, uh, I guess I have a crafty family. Um, I feel like that's not going to be opaque enough. So we might want to mix it with a little bit of like, maybe like a little bit of just like a shimmer. Instead of a sparkle, a little bit of shimmer white. And then uh, we want to add maybe a little bit more texture. And I want to keep it white. I don't want to add any like iridescence or anything. But um, I do have just some like white glitter. I had white glitter. <laughs> I just have some like white glitter that's a little bit bigger um, and I think that would add I also have this white glitter. We'll add a little bit of like white glitter I think to give it a little bit of like some bigger grains to it because we're going for kind of a sandy look. Um, maybe not that, this one. This one kind of shimmers silver. I don't know if I like that. Maybe we'll go with this glitter that's just a little bit more like white, white. It's a little bit smaller, but uh, I don't. I don't think that the way that this one shimmers silver is that silver is necessarily what I'm looking for. It would probably be okay, but oh, okay. It never likes to find things up close. See how it's kind of it, it kind of shimmers silver. I don't know if that feels very sandy to me. So we'll put that one. Away. Um. We got those for that. Uh, this was for this. Um, let's see here. What else is on my to do list? Oh, the um, Patreon D20s. That's right. I'm thinking so the Patreon D20s, I think I'm going to do half and half. I think I'm going to do them half. So I did a poll, if you're just getting here, uh, to see what colors I should do the Patreon D20s. Um, and there was a tie, like a three-way tie. Um, and so one said black, white, gray, one of those colors. One said metallics, and then one said rainbow. Um, so I'm going to do half black, white, gray with metallics, and then half rainbow. Sneak peek for people who are getting August's Patreon D20s, I guess. Um, I think am I doing just the highest number up, highest number down. Do I want to do? Wait, do I want to do the white? I think I'm gonna do white with silver on one half. Do I want to do that at the top end or the bottom end of the die? Probably the bottom end of the die, right? You want the rainbow to be on top? Yeah? Goodness, how does this lid go on? I... There you go. Um, although, thinking about that now... I'm gonna swap this. I think I'm gonna do that... 
I think I'm going to grab the ones with the uh, highest number at the bottom. Or highest number at the top. It's the highest number at the bottom. Three, four, six. I always need more D20 molds. Um, oh, that's six. I need seven. I need literally all of my D20 molds. Okay. So we'll, we will start with the white and silver then, and then the next pour will be the rainbow colors. I think for the rainbow, I'm just going to do, I think I'm going to do, so sneak peek, uh, dirty pour with just um, like th these three colors. And I think that I'll make them opaque, I think. Um, I could do them not opaque. Um, but I think as they mix, though, we'll end up with all of the uh, all of the colors. And then the other half. Do I have a silver? I don't have a silver. Hmm. I was hoping that I had like a, a silver uh, like ink because I do have like a gold ink and a copper ink. It's actually a pearlescent white ink, which I think discolors a bit. I remember correctly, I think the uh, pearl one here actually kind of just colors brown. Um, so we're not gonna use that, but uh, I can I can just use silver uh, silver mica. Let's do this one. This one is called winter. It's funny. It looks blue in the uh, in the bag. This is why I do test chips. Those are the same. Those are the same. Uh, Mike goes. This test chip goes with this blue bag. <laughs> Looks very different. Um, but I think that kind of light silver I think will be pretty with some white. And I think we'll do kind of uh, probably just a, a plain old white white. We could do the titanium dioxide. Nah, that stuff sinks like a sinks so much. So I do shimmery. Maybe I will do shimmery on this half. I will do shimmery white and silver, and then I will do um, satin rainbow on the other half. That sounds like a good plan. So I'll do the winter and some of the silk white, which I already have out. Yes, it's over here, ready for the the D twenty. Sorry, it's kind of loud. Um, let's see. I think that's all of the dice uh, that I was going to get set up for today. Um, we have been streaming for about two hours. So, we could probably call it here, or um, if you guys want to hang out a little while longer, we could do some, um, we could get some lids attached to these necklaces. If you guys want to see some of the jewelry I'm working on for some in-person events coming up. Set these over here for now. Leave the, the colors out for now, just so I remember what I want later. But I have I have some jewelry here. I have already attached the little like rings to the to the stoppers. But the, uh, the stoppers are not attached to the bottles. So I'm just going to attach those with a little bit of UV resin. And I've got kind of three different types here that I was working on. I have um, little bat bottles. These all have little bats in them with some shimmery resin and some kind of like black. Um, that's all of these ones. Some of those are going to be earrings. Some of them are going to be necklaces. I don't know why it has done this. I, it's like pulled away from the side of the bottle a little bit, which is kind of annoying. Because it definitely makes it look not as polished, I feel like. Um, but I have these little galaxy ones as well. I think it's mostly where I attach the stars and stuff to the side with UV resin. It's kind of like pulled away. It's like shrunk or something. So some of these just have like pockets. Anyone have any ideas? Anyone know why it's done that? See how it, it's like it's kind of pulled away from the side of the bottle. 
it's just shrunk a little bit but what you gonna do that's okay but we're just going to um, affix the the corks into the bottles I'll pull this out I have I have some UV resin tools aka a couple of pins in here um, that'll make it easier I think to spread the the UV resin around the lids um, and, oh and then the third one is um, little terrariums that have flowers and either bees or beetles in them so there's a bee an actual bee um, I've tried to make them pretty sturdy um, that, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be necklaces. I don't want them to move around much. Um, I have ended up with some uh, UV resin kind of on the sides and stuff. You can see, I think it kind of just looks like water, though, so I'm kind of okay with it. It's just like dew droplets or something. Um, I've got those, and then I've got a couple with beetles in them instead of bees. So I've got those to do as well. They all have like different, I like these ones. I don't know, the little terrarium ones I think are really fun. Different colored flowers and things. This one, the beetle's just on the flowers. Oops, towards the bottom. Just crawling around in there. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's get the lids put on these. So what is everybody else up to today? I usually, I don't know, I, I just kind of did some editing today, um, mostly took it easy just because I wasn't feeling 100%, look at that, oh, I'll probably go get do some more editing after this, I need to, I'm, I'm actually very close to being done with the video that I'm in the middle of editing. Um, I, oh, I was talking about this earlier, and then I never actually, like, finished with all of the stuff why I, uh, I'm so late on videos. Um, started editing one video, decided that I was just not motivated to finish it, um, so kind of scrapped that, and then went to start editing a different video, so that pushed things back a bit. Um, and then I got swamped with commissions, and I wanted to focus on that and in-person stuff. Looking for 3D models for inclusion, found some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. What do, what, do, what do you find? Um, anyways, wanted to focus on stuff for in-person and uh, commissions because felt like I was run behind on that stuff. Um, so editing took kind of a, a back seat. Um, and then uh, I've been kind of putting things off because I I'm at that stage. I bet people, other people can relate to this too where like you know how the stuff that you're making could be better, but you're not quite sure how to achieve that. <laughs> Spent the last week making your first set of dice melts. Ooh. And you're now patiently waiting for your first, first pour to cure. Ooh. Exciting. I want to know how it goes. That's so exciting, though. It's like, yeah. It's always like, that, that's one of the things that I've found with streaming is I'm just like, but... You know, it's fun to stream, but you don't actually, you guys don't actually get to see how things, like, turned out during the stream. We all gotta wait for at least 24 hours. But one of the best parts is unmolding everything. Because it's so exciting. It's like a surprise. It's like opening up a little present. You're never quite sure how everything is gonna turn out. So it's just like, ooh, this is cool. Uh, candles, shells, mushrooms, key term to use is basing bits. Oh! My manufacturer, okay. Cool, I'll take a look. Those all sound like, uh, Things would be good for. I should really figure out at some point how to um, 
Oh, kit bash kit. Okay. Um, I should really figure out at some point how to make it so that I can make molds of things that I uh, 3D resin print. Just because I think it'd probably be okay if I let things sit for a while. I, I've heard that if you let them like, you know, sit in you, you know, sit sit in the sun for and let them air out for like a month. Not necessarily let them sit in the sun for a month, but let them sit in the sun for a while and let them air out for like a month. There shouldn't be too much cure inhibition, but I don't, I haven't actually tested that. Um, but I've definitely, I ran into so many problems when I was trying to make a Jumbo D20 blank at one point. My goodness, it was a whole thing. Um, okay, I'll add a couple more stones to this one. You say that, so my, um, I, yeah, uh, yeah, okay, um, I actually had problems with the tin cure, so there was, there was two problems I ran into with the tin cure silicone, um, I did, I did make molds with tin cure silicone, um, of the Jumbo D20 that I printed, um, it made a mold just fine, um, but the tin cure, the, the tin cure silicone was really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It like split apart really easily. So that was, that was the first problem. The main problem was though, um, for some reason it caused cure inhibition with my two part, uh, resin, the tin cure silicone did. I don't know what happened. I, I, um, used, I had resin from the same batch that I used in like something else. One of the silicone, I think one of my platinum silicone, um, molds. I did some in the tin cure. I did some in my platinum cure molds. And for some reason, the one that was in the tin cure, it was slimy. The, uh, the, when I pulled out the resin from it, I don't know what happened, but I had like cure inhibition with when I poured my resin into my tin cure. Not sure what caused it. Yeah, I have heard of inhibit X. Um, I don't know. I, I don't plan on making a ton of uh, molds, I suppose. I don't know. I've just ordered masters from other folks when I've uh, needed them, at least so far. But yeah, that's, I don't know, that's something that I might have to look into if I keep doing, if I have like a commission that I end up doing where I need to, uh, make a, like, print something out and then make a mold of it. Uh, a little bit more than a hundred bucks, I think. Usually for like a full, you know, seven, eight piece set. They're not cheap. They are not cheap. That's why I almost didn't get masters made. I, since I was never expecting to sell dice, I was just like, do I really need masters? This is this is a lot of money. Um, but you know, I guess it worked out that I got them. Um, I've gotten all of my masters through Revel Broker. Um, they have kind of a, a weird setup. Uh, oh, I've heard Druid Dice is good. I've heard Druid Dice is good. Maybe that maybe that's closer. I don't know. It's been a while since I've got mine. Um, but yeah, I have heard. I think I've heard good things about Druid Dice. Um, oh, you got molds. So you didn't, you didn't get the masters, you just got molds? I, I, am, I guess I'm... I'm talking with, like, custom faces and stuff, too. Like, I have a, a custom symbol on the G20... Um, I have my, I have my, my logo. I have my logo on the, the D20, so that's a little bit more, 
Um, but... And on my D2, actually, I have a D2. Let me, let me, let me nuke these just a second. Yeah, okay, so yeah. So that probably brings it down a little bit if you don't want, if you don't need custom stuff. Man, I wish I didn't have to make molds. That's my least favorite part of, of dice making is making the molds. Make, making the dice is the best part. And my least favorite part is probably making the molds. I need to make some molds. I have, um, I am, we will see how long this commission takes with the, the scythe and the staff and stuff. Um, I am, attempting to hand sculpt a new coin design. Um, I want to make a mold, I think, of where I am at so far, though, at, so that I can have, like, a save point if I, if I mess things up. Is it because of the pressure, or is it just because of the UV resin? What, what, um, so which, which dice, what dice maker? What's the solution? Please help, help. I imagine you're, you're typing at the moment. I'm just, I don't know. I think, I think as long as you, you can probably 3D print them. Um, I will say, so Revel Broker, like I said, I got my, my masters through them. Um, they have, um, their Patreon Discord is very focused. I'm part of their Patreon. You have to be part of their Patreon um, to order Masters from them. Um, but they have a large focus on um, teaching other people how to print Masters. So, you know, if, um, if you're looking for, you know, help with printing Masters, you can spend like one buck a month. To join their Patreon and have access to a bunch of people who are experienced in printing masters. Um, if you want to print your own, that might be a good way to do that. I'm sure there's stuff, just free stuff online too. But um, I will. They've been good to work with, so I, I, I tend to uh, sing their phrases. Revel Broker. Um, R-E-V-E-L-B-R-O-K-E-R. -E -E Maybe no pressure thing, it's in the video link, but... So the thing is, um... Oh, okay, Ribonator, okay. Uh, lightning bolt dice and mass potions. Failure is okay. Okay, I'll take a look. Um, links don't show up. So if you sent a link, it, it just doesn't show up. It looks like it's it sent, and then for some reason... It doesn't even show me if people send links in chat. I do want to change that because I want people to be able to send links in chat. Um, I've always been okay with that. Um, as long as people, you know, give me a heads up on what the links are before sending them. But uh, I don't know. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't even, like, tell me if someone sends a link. It just makes it look like the link was sent by, like, on their end and then no one sees it. Uh, but I need to figure that out. I think I have it set up at the moment so that mods could send links, but I couldn't figure out a way to set it up so that everyone could send links. So that's that's something I should fiddle with at some point. I've been talking, saying that for a while now, but really should. Oh, I should tell you guys. So uh, for folks who have been here for a while, I have been slowly working towards getting my YouTube channel monetized. Um, guess how many hour, watch time hours I need. Uh, I went and looked earlier today. So I, I, I will say you need the, 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 um, the requirements for getting YouTube AdSense are a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of video time watched. Um, I have the, the thousand subscribers. 
But how much? At, at Four thousand hours of video time watched in the last three hundred and sixty-five days. That's that's part of it too. How much video time do you think I have left as of when I looked earlier today? Uh, out of the four thousand hours, how much more do I need? What do you think? Give a guess. <laughs> Half? Any other guesses? A stream's worth? I don't know if the um, actual stream counts or if just people watching the stream after the fact counts as uh, a, a, um, as watch time. I'm not sure. Because I don't know if this is technically a video or if the stream is like a separate thing. It counts as a video, you know, after I'm done streaming, but I don't know if like the time of people watching while I'm streaming counts or not. And rolls a d12. I, you know, I mean, I suppose if enough people watch the stream, right, that could be any number. Now, the answer is about 40. About 40 hours out of 4,000. So what's that, 1%? One, 1 yeah, about, I have about 1% left of the required time. It's so close, so close. I don't know if I should like do something fun. I don't know, some sort of video or something for, to celebrate. Cause I'm very, I'm, <laughs> you get right on it. Thank you, thank you. Um, but it's so close. Um, oh, one, but yeah, one of the, so I'm going back to an, an earlier topic, um, talking about being so slow on videos. I'm also kind of in the middle of switching things up. I'm in the middle of editing a video. I have up until this point edited, edit, yes, edited all of my videos in Blender. Um, fun fact, I suppose. Um, have edited all of them in Blender. Yes, the 3D modeling software, it has a video editor. Um, I went and downloaded a, a different free video editor. Um, yesterday, day before yesterday. So the video that I'm in the middle of editing, I'm still editing in Blender. Um, but I think moving forward, I'm going to try out a new software. I have a lot of things kind of in flux at the moment. Um, I also have kind of an idea for how I want to make... <laughs> yes, I, 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 I've possibly been editing all of my videos in the Blender video editor. Um, <laughs> maybe, possibly. That is the correct response. I hope everyone knows. People who, who don't know what's going on. Uh, Blender is, is the correct response to me admitting that I edit all of my videos in it. Um. <laughs> Anyways, I did go in and download an actual video editor like yesterday. We're going to try that out moving forward, um, but that might make things a little bit slower as I figure out, you know, all the new hotkeys and stuff. Cause I I mean, it's, it's built for animation, right? It's built for making your own animations and things. Um, so it has a video editor built into it so you can make your own everything right there. Um, <clears throat> but yes, it's not necessarily designed for video editing, but it has a video editor. Hey, that is what I, that is what I, uh, I think that is what I downloaded. Yes, I did download DaVinci Resolve, the free version. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, how did you know? <laughs> is that, a, is that question because it's good or because it's bad? I, now I'm not sure. Is this like a, is, are you asking that because it's a standard or it's because, oh, people have switched to that recently and it's terrible. Now I'm, now, now you've got me second guessing, but, um, yes, I went and downloaded DaVinci Resolve. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, I, ha I have some ideas for how I want to make my videos, I think, you know, kind of better, more entertaining to watch, um, 
because I feel like I am lacking that a little bit at the moment. I probably should get back into doing like tutorials and stuff too. I know that that's what people tend to. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've heard that the color grading on it is excellent. That was something that I was seeing. I did a little bit of research. I was watching some videos and things. I've heard that the color, it's like the best there is for color grading. Uh, but at least the stuff I was seeing, what I was saying. Um, I may have found this because I was looking at video cameras uh, earlier. So I have my little, I've got my little camcorder here. Goes toe to toe with the paid ones like Premiere Pro and Final Cut. Sweet, all right. Yeah, I mean, that makes me feel better about my, my choice to switch over and try it out. Yeah, 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 I know what you meant, toe to toe. Um, but I've got my little, I've got my, my camcorder, which has worked great for me. I, I appreciate, my, appreciate my little resin, resin soaked camcorder. Look at how I had, did this thing is a mess. Um, but, uh, my goodness, I, so here, here's the, the whole story of, of, of me, I'm, uh, with cameras. Um, I, how, you know, I've been trying to figure out recently, like, what do I like watching in videos? Because I want to make videos that I would enjoy watching. Because I figured that that's what other people would enjoy watching, too. Seems fair, right? Um, I realized that a lot of the videos that I enjoy watching, like craft videos and stuff, it's not just about the craft that the person's working on. I also like seeing their reactions to it. If that makes sense. Um, not even necessarily them going like, oh, but like seeing them working on it. Not even necessarily their face or whatever, but just them in the moment uh, reacting to how things turned out or things are going. Um, so I wanted to figure out a way to be able to include that in my videos. Um, I could do that with my camcorder. Yeah, personality, exactly. I, I'll have, I can manufacture some of that, it's fine. I can manufacture personality, it's all good. Um, I could do that with my camcorder, uh, but something that I also wanted was good audio quality. Um, so, I was started looking into, like, microphones and stuff that I could use. Um, I'm thinking, and this is something I might bring into streams as well. I went and ordered a nice lav, uh, so, well, a nice wireless lav system. I got a lav too, it was fairly cheap, but uh, I ordered a nice system for using a lav mic, um, which is the kind that just like clips to your lapel type thing, a little tiny mic. Got that. Um, but I was trying to figure out a camera that I could use, I think that I could talk to, like I'm talking to you now. Um, what was I saying? that I could record for a long period of time because if I want to film my whole workspace while I am working, I'm probably covered in resin and I don't particularly want to cover another, I, like, I, you know, I have this one already covered in resin. This one I'm going to use to still film what I'm working on, close-ups, that sort of thing. But I, I want a second camera to film me and the workspace as a whole so I can cut back and forth between it and stuff. I don't have another person to, like, move it and stuff. I figure I'm going to end up with a tripod. Maybe I'll drag my brother into it at some point if, uh, if I can convince him. Did I? Okay. Let me move that out of the way. Don't need that. Um, so as we're looking at cameras, I wanted something that could record for, like, two hours, Right, because I, you know, I want to be able to set it up and have it film the whole workspace and me, and I don't want to have to mess with it while and you know start it up again while I'm covered in resin. I don't want to make a huge mess, so I started looking at uh, cameras that would record for uninterrupted as long as I want um, without, you know, stopping. I have, you know, I have a picture camera. I have a really nice camera for taking pictures. Um, it will record for like 20 minutes or something before it just automatically stops recording. I didn't want that. I wanted something that would continue recording. So then I started looking at, uh, camcorders and video cameras, 
Um, most camcorders don't have the option for an external microphone. Um, like if you look at this one, there is no there's no connector for um, there's no connector to, to attach an external mic. Uh, it is just what it is. So then I started looking at video cameras because I needed I wanted something that could record uninterrupted and also I could attach the microphone too so that I didn't have to um, well for two reasons one because then I don't have to have some other thing that I'm recording audio to and then I'd have like three different things going on I'd have you know two cameras and an audio thing it's much easier if I can record audio to the camera as well at least in my brain um, and also then if I decide I want to do like vlogging or something I can attach a microphone to it and have good audio there too if I want to go out and I don't know, vlog at another convention or something. More versatility. Um, but anyways, I started looking at at, at, um, at video cameras. Boy, are they expensive. <laughs> I, I finally decided on something. We'll, I, I'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I, I did end up looking at different uh, video cameras, and one of them led to the... Um, the site that DaVinci Resolve is on, because it's by the same company, I guess. Uh, that's not the camera that I ended up going with, because I'm not, I, I'm not made of money, but also, you know. <laughs> but I did go and download the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and then uh, order a different camera. So, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I am, it's one of those things where I'm excited to try and... In a past life, you were filming. Yeah, I guess maybe I'm gonna turn into a film guy. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Black Magic cameras are good. Yeah, they looked good. They they looked like they were high quality and stuff, but also a little maybe a little bit outside of my price range. And I don't I don't necessarily plan on doing like cinema quality stuff I guess um may, may like may, maybe someday but um you know I want I I yeah maybe if uh things go really well maybe someday I will go back and get a uh one of their cameras but if things go really a camera uh did you have recommendations? I was debating holding off, but I may have ordered one earlier today. I did. I didn't get a Black Magic one. What were you? What would you uh, suggest? I'm looking for something that's a little bit cheaper, but also has something that's a little bit cheaper than that. Uh, but also will record uninterrupted. Um, oh, what did I get? I got. I think I, I, it's a, an older camera, but. Just in my research and stuff, it had the audio connection, it had the um, uninterrupted recording, so I could record as long as I want, as long as there's room on my card. Um, it had a lot of the features that I want. I think it was a Pan Panasonic G85, I think that's what it was. Slightly older camera, I think, but it had the, um, the pieces that I wanted. Pretty sure it was a Panasonic G85. I don't know why I'm grabbing my phone like I can look it up. I don't. I have to look at my order. Hopefully that was a good choice. When I was looking around, it was kind of... It just seemed to line up with the, the specifics that I wanted. I, I Like, I've heard that the autofocus on it isn't as good as some of the other ones, um, but... Again, for, for what I was looking for specifically, it seemed to line up with what I wanted. We'll see, though. We'll see, though, once I get it. I ordered it. Um, but yeah, my thought is that uh, that way I can... I'm going to need to clean my desk. You guys want to see what my desk looks like? It's a mess. My desk is a mess. You guys are seeing the clean part of my desk, which is sad. Um, let me let me let me show you let me show you what it looks like just a little bit to the left. 
Um, here's what it looks like over here. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on over here. So, and then also, of course, there's a there's a whole computer here. Let's get you over. Um, so I'm gonna need to rearrange the things a little bit. Probably scoot the computer over a little bit. Clean off this part of my table so that I can actually like stand here and work there. Um, but I but I, I am hoping that like I don't know. I, I have high hopes. But it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't know that I have the technical ability um, to pull off, like, my vision, you know what I mean? It, it, it reminds me of a graph I saw at one point of, like, um, like, you, like your skill level as an artist versus, like, um, your how well you can, see, like, perceive art type thing. <laughs> Basically, it was just like, as you get better, you also get better at recognizing what makes things good. And there's certain points where you like it kind of converges where you're just like yeah I'm making something good and then it like diverges again where you're you can see ahead where it's just like ooh that's really good and you don't have the skill to get there yet <laughs> I think I'm at that point where I'm just like I can I can see what would make my videos better but I don't know that I have the skill <laughs> to do that so it's just a little like <sighs> a little like nerve wracking I guess. Okay, I think I got everything done that I wanted to get done today. It's about two and a half. Let's see. You've not used a ton of cameras, so your guess is as good as mine. I had one camera that was your baby in university's film department. It was Black Magic. Oh, okay. Every film major's final words. Wait, which, which part is every film major's final words? I can see how I want it, but I don't have the skill to achieve it. That's probably just how it is for, like, all artists, I imagine. I, I am kind of lucky, I guess, at this point where I, I've done... I don't feel that way very often with dice. There's certain things where I'm, like... Like, there's certain, you know, designs and stuff that I see where I'm like that, where I'm just like, oh, man, I don't, I don't think I have the skill to achieve that. But a lot of the dice stuff now, I have enough experience where I'm like, I could do that specific thing that you're looking for. Um, but I'm sure as I as I get better and stuff too, there'll be things where I'm just like, oof, I could have made that better. I'm definitely that way about my my past work. Oh, also the D4 for that set. Um, I'm I think maybe I'd want to scoot it down a little bit, but the D4 for the uh, the comp complicated set has a little potion bottle in the. Uh, in the in the D4 which is a liquid core it's a liquid core with some shimmery red in there um, just since I'm showing you guys all of the stuff today I need to take a picture of that and send it to the, the person that it's for yeah yeah exactly your taste in the art gets better way faster than your ability in the art that's that's how I feel with uh, with uh, YouTube videos. I feel like I I am at that point where I'm just like oh, I know that this could be better, but I I don't know how to do it yet. I'm slowly trying to get like um, figure out my style when it comes to um, thumbnails and kind of figure out some more stylistic choices for the channel. I feel like I've got I've got my lab coat on. I've got my lab coat on for streams. Which honestly is kind of nice like. And actually this means that I could wear some of my fun clothes too. I'm in comfy clothes today cuz I'm not feeling 100%. But I could go back to wearing my my ties and stuff and I won't be worried about getting a uh, resin all over them cuz I have my lab coat on. So that's exciting. But yeah, working on some of this aesthetic stuff and I think the new editing program might be good because there's a lot of things where I'm just like, I wish I could add a little bit more character to some of this editing, but it's a little bit, I, I don't know, it, it, it's, I don't know my way, maybe it's just because I don't know my way around Blender enough or just because it's not really built for the video editing part, but um, it might be easier to add in some of the more like things for effect in the new in the new program we'll find out um 
But yeah, I think I think I'm probably gonna call it for today. Um, we got everything done that I everything pretty much set up that I wanted to get set up. Um, it's been about two and a half hours. I'm I'm, I'm fading fast. <laughs> I'm a little tired. I'm st I still have a cold, so I'm like, <laughs> So I think I'm probably going to call it, but thanks for hanging out. Um, I appreciate seeing y'all, hanging out and chatting. Um, I, think, I think I should be back next Sunday. Check my calendar here, make sure I don't have... Yeah, I should be back next Sunday. I don't know, um, I don't know what we'll do next, uh, next Sunday. So if you have something in particular you'd like to see dice related or business related or anything like that, uh, let me know. You can leave it in the comments of the stream once it turns into a video or uh, message, you know, put it in my Discord or something like that. But maybe maybe we'll do some inking, maybe we will actually pour some resin next week. But if you have, have any ideas for that, let me know. Dice the size of a baseball. I mean, these are the kind of ideas. This is why they pay Ethan the big bucks. Like, uh, these are the ideas that we need. Um, I will get right on that. Um, sorry, I was just, I was just debating how I have like a baseball. Well, it's not quite a baseball size mold. We can just, we can just make a baseball. There we go. But yeah. Um, Probably no video, probably no video next week, but there should be one the week after for sure. Um, but yeah, I will, I will see you guys later.